get started. I want to welcome you to tonight's college application wor essay workshop. This is, we're going to, the essay is such an important part and it's so often difficult for students to know where to start. You're looking at a blank piece of paper or a blank screen and prompts that you're not quite sure what to do with and let's get you started. So let me introduce myself briefly so you know who it is who's talking to you. Um, my name is Catherine O'Brien and I founded Celtic College Consultants in 2004. I serve clients across the country, helping them figure out schools and majors and money and write essays and get through the whole process. Oops, sorry. Seems like I'm adjusting the screen there. Okay. Um, I actually studied at Northwestern University and I have an industrial engineering degree. And then uh, a couple of years later, I went off to Steubenville and I got a master's degree in theology. So I had to learn how to write in graduate school and um, can figure, obviously. I, for the last 15 years, have been functioning as a college consultant and I help kids figure out the whole thing and get, get in and get money and get fin need-based financial aid and all of it and manage the process and keep the parents sane and all of that part. And I'm really a student advocate. I really much focus on what the student's gifts are, talents, inclinations, what they want to go do in their lives and help them get a voice, strengthen their voice, be aware of their talents and abilities and go find the great schools and be able to articulate themselves effectively. So I've written a few books, as you may see. Um, my students are well prepared. When they get to campus, they know what they're doing um, and they are ready to go. We work hard at getting the right fit schools, polishing the applications, which we'll be talking about tonight. They have well-crafted outstanding essays and they tend to submit ahead of deadlines. And I have an example at the very end, which will show you the power of that. Um, worked with a fabulous young man last year. So these are a few of the schools that have, my kids have gone to and they've been accepted at. So there's, you know, Northwestern and Penn and Texas A&M and Berkeley and Notre Dame. And we've got art schools and engineering schools and liberal arts schools and Catholic schools and just the whole spectrum. We've got some Ivy League schools. So I really work with the students. I'm not focused on a cluster of schools and only the UCs or anything like that. Um, so I've had kids go all over the place. So again, did you get the handout? So I made a tiny URL to help because it's a Google Doc. Um, so tinyurl.com slash essay mentor handout. And if you'll have that handy, that will be very, very helpful to you as we go through this because we're actually gonna do some writing. It's not just gonna be me talking about things. We're gonna do some exercises. So if anybody needs to print that out, we're gonna do some introductory things first. As you all may know, rule number one when writing, keep your audience in mind. So in this case, your audience is the admissions personnel and you're going to get an average of six minutes spent on your application, which is somewhat appalling, but it is what it is. Um, that is the average in the country. Some places it's much less, some places it's a little bit more. Some places they're reviewed by multiple people, some places they're not. So you need to be crisp and sharp and memorable because that person is plowing through a lot of essays every day. So what are they, what's their purpose in life? This is sort of looking into the college admissions world. What is? What are they doing? So they want students that fit in to their university. and. That means academically, so you have the right academic caliber. You don't want to be in a school where everything is so incredibly hard, you're failing all your classes, or everything's so easy, you're not being challenged, and you're not getting the opportunities to grow and do research and explore and really advance yourself. So you need to fit in. And your interests also need to align with the interests of the school, which is to say, for example, if you're a research hound and they're a school that's really light on research opportunities, that's not really a very good fit or you're a big campus, go rah-rah football team kind of person, and you're talking to a small liberal arts school, you, you, that might not the right fit either. So there's a lot of aspects to that. 
Um, okay, let me write. Just a second, I'm gonna write a note. Okay, so I still have somebody who can't hear. I'm not quite sure why, but. Um, and then financially, some schools, a few schools will say that they are need blind, which means they don't look at financial need in the admissions office. Um, yeah, I don't really think that's very accurate. So um, not really. <laughs> there are a lot of indicators and, and that is going to be a factor. At some schools, it's a big factor. Some schools, it's a, it's a lesser factor, but it's going to be a factor. Um, full pay students get in at a higher rate than full need students. And that just is what it is because colleges are businesses and they have to balance the bottom line. So that is an area of fit that comes into play during admissions. Um, and then for your personality and your learning style, if you are a hands-on learner and you want to do a lot of building things, you know, research in the field, actual interviews, kind of research, that sort of thing, and they are much a lecture university, that's not going to work very well. Or it's a all Socratic discussion kind of place, and that's not your style either. That's not going to work well either. And again, personality goes into that too. Just are you going to be, in general, uh, a, a happy, contented person at their campus? So what do they have to look at? What do they see? They, they see your academics. They're going to evaluate your grades, the level of challenge. So if you have lots of AP classes at your high school and you don't take any of them, that's going to be noted. If you've really challenged yourself, that's going to be noted. What your grade trends are. Did you kind of have a struggle freshman year getting used to it and you ramped up and did better as you went along? You started to tank as you got into calculus and the math, or what happened? What, what are those trends that you're going to notice those as well? And then your test scores, which validate and help them map out the caliber of the academics at your high school. Um, and then financially, your net value to the school, as I just mentioned. Personality, learning style. The big question really is, are you likely to stay and graduate? That's their goal. And, and do they have the resources you need, which is both ends of um, people with learning challenges that need extra support, dyslexics, et cetera, that need some challenge, need support over there, as well as you're academically gifted. And it could be the same student I'm talking about when they have a profound gift in a certain area. Do they have the resources on campus for you to grow in that area? So that whole um, match comes into play as well. So what's their vantage point? They're going to look at all these things or assessing all these things, but this is what they can see. Your academic data, which are your grades and your test scores. Your essays and any short answer questions and depends on the application. You have everything from no, no essays at all to three, four essays, sometimes submitting papers and a number of short answer questions. So you've got a huge spectrum of um, requests and requirements from the colleges. And then your extracurricular activity summary. So they'll get that. Depending on the application, they'll get more or less information about that. And then other input. So sometimes um, there's an option to submit a video or an interview or a portfolio or do an audition or recommendations. So those are the bits and pieces of data that they have. And that's all they have look to look at to determine, are you a good fit? Should we accept you? Should we not accept you? So essays are a huge piece. This is the place where you get to stand, come off the page. You're more than a bunch of stats, and we know that, but who are you? And what is that mix of specialness that makes you who you are? This is the place that your personality can come out, your hopes and dreams come out. You get to differentiate yourself from your peers. So don't be afraid to shine. Don't be afraid to be quirky if you're quirky. Don't be afraid to be very articulate if that's how you roll. Whatever your personality is and that special mix that makes you you is what they're looking for. Be yourself. Do not try to psych out admissions. 
Oh, I think they want to hear. So that's what I will say. Be yourself. Use your voice. So kids have done all kinds of creative things. Some people have written poetry. They've done different things in these essays. Use your voice. Be who you are. And let your light shine. Don't be afraid because the kids around you are not into what you're into and you're really into whatever it is you're into, let it show. Admissions is not looking for individual students who are good at everything and so well-rounded that they have no strengths. They are looking for a well-rounded class. And so if you shine in leadership or in collaboration or in other things, shine. Yes, Ryan, these essays are not a five paragraph English essay, not at all. These are personal statements. They're very different. We'll get into a couple of the different structures that are the major structures that are used in effective essays, but this is not a five paragraph essay. A five paragraph essay is I have a thesis and I'm gonna prove it to you. And I'm gonna knock out the opposition and the opposing view and I've got it solid and put it all together and boom, here's my argument that whatever my thesis statement is is true. That is not at all what you're doing here. So put away English class. That's part of why writing these is such a challenge because it's just different. Okay. Other things that you want, what will your presence bring to campus? What are you gonna to add to that campus community? What are your hopes and dreams? This is the place you get to say it. There's no other place typically, except to say what major you're thinking about and what makes you tick? What makes you get out of bed in the morning? What makes you want to do the things you want to do? What is that quixotic mix that's you? The curiosity, the interests, the values, the drive, the personality, all of it coming together, your experiences. There's a whole bunch here. And it's really hard, as you're probably already figuring out, to put all this in words. It makes a five paragraph, 50 page paper sound easy because it is comparatively. This is about you, not about some subject outside of you. So it's a whole different ball game. There's a lot to stay, a lot to say. And so this is where everybody typically is, is where do I get started? And I'm just gonna double check that this is, okay. Um, because I have these ideas, these lights, these things that are me, how do I get started in expressing it? Oops, sorry. Essays need a goal, otherwise, like this sign, there's gonna be all these bits and pieces pointing different directions, and nobody's really gonna get what you're saying. And you're not gonna be happy with it either, because it's just a mishmash, and that's not cohesive and coherent, and it doesn't really let anybody remember anything. It's sort of kind of a mud splat, <laughs> and they're like, oh, that's not who I am. So you need goals. One of the things that we're gonna work on today is helping you start to figure out what your goals are in your essay. Typically you have one to three goals in your personal statement and a vision. It's gonna to come together and create a vision of you. There are things that they already know from your grades and classes you've chosen to take, the activities you've chosen to get involved in, your accomplishments. They know those things. There's certain things they can infer. If you've spent you know, 40 hours a week taking care of an elderly relative and you still did this, that, and the other thing and you have those grades, that tells them a lot about your responsibility and time management, and things like that. So there's things that though they can infer just from what you've already told them, but then there's the rest. And that's what we're gonna get into. So let's start writing. We are gonna do three exercises today. Actually, I'm gonna launch you on three exercises today. You will have to finish them after. So the first one is what is called the Essence Objects Essay, Exercise, sorry. So what I want you to do for this, and you will just take notes kind of on the instructions for this one, you'll need to do it later, is to get in a quiet place or some headphones with some nice music and spend about 15 minutes. And I want you to imagine a box whatever size or shape. And in this box is a set of objects. And each of these is what we call an essence object for you. So what do I mean by that? 
It's an object that represents one of your fundamental qualities. So each object is more than just an object. For example, I have a green pen in my desk. I use it frequently. I use it to grade all my kids' papers. I use it to, for my things with my clients. I use it all the time. Why? Because when you're correcting things, you see red, 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 it stop. It's bleeding all over. It's, it's the opposite of growth. Green is life and hope and encouragement. And that's always the approach that I want to take to working with anyone's assignments, whether they are you know, looking at colleges or they are writing essays or they're doing a homework assignment that I'm grading for one of my kids that I'm homeschooling. Another thing I have on my desk is hand lotion. There's a certain scent of hand lotion. My mom used to give me this scent when she was still alive. And my mom was not a very expressive person. Affection was not her strength. And so she gave gifts. Gifts are not really how I receive love very well, but that's what she did. And so I keep this on my desk. It's almost empty at this point, but I can still smell it. There's still some lotion in there. And it reminds me I'm not alone. Somebody loves me. And somebody loves me and is encouraging me to nurture myself because obviously lotion is to keep your skin nice. So that's one of my essence objects. Another thing I have is a rosary. It belongs to my daughter. She left it when she moved away. Right now, that's not something that's part of her life, but I think it would be an important thing for her. And so it's there to remind me that I love her and to pray for her. So these are objects. They're simple things, but they are indicative of other things. I value my children. I value the love for my parents. I value affirming others. You get all of those from those three items. So a couple of examples here. You know, there's a group of objects there, mostly blacks and browns and whites. There's a tea kettle and a candle. These things are a mishmash. Some of them, I'm not even sure what they are, but the overall sense I get from this is slowness of time, calm, peacefulness, you know, having a cup of tea with somebody while some candles are burning. There's some intimacy there, being able to have some deep conversations. There's nature involved in several of those things. This person's just grounded. They're just a calm person and there's strength there. And I don't feel overwhelmed. I don't know if this is a man or a woman it could go either way. I like all those things and I'm a woman, but they tend to be what we think of as masculine colors, but could go either way. And here's another example. This person got up off the chair so fast, everything's flying behind them, right? And they're bright and they're perky and they're lively. And we've got a little bit of a Southern vibe going on, be it Southeast or Southwest. We've got a palm tree. Are we in Florida or California? This person's near the beach with their flip-flops probably, their hip chair. This is a different kind of vibe. So again, a few objects can tell you a lot about the person. So that's the kind of objects that I would like you to gather. I'd like you to make a list of 20 essence objects and don't complain because you are infinitely complex and creative. You could come up with a thousand, only want 20. And you don't have to, but I think it's a good idea to just jot a little bit about what they mean to you. You know, like I might write, you know, hand lotion mom. Um, or I might write, or write more than that. The green pen, I would write more. Um, they don't have to be a lot. And put on some music, let your mind wander, and take about 15 minutes. So you'll need to do that after we're done. But that is the first exercise, which might seem really random, but trust me, it's not. Okay. So then let's take a look at the second exercise. This you'll need the sheets that hopefully you printed out. Um, there is a sheet there labeled the values exercise. And let's see if I can manage to move things around. On this, we're gonna do this right now. So I'd like you to get that sheet out and something to write with. And 
I'm going to give you one minute. And I would like you to select 10 of those values. And these are not moral values. This is not a commitment for a lifetime. These are just the things that strike you right now as really important to you. Go. So you have one minute to scan through them. If what you are thinking of isn't listed, go ahead and add it at the bottom. But these are 10 things you value. You have 40 more seconds. Fifteen seconds left. So keep going. You want to keep it to ten. You don't get to ten. That's okay. But you want to get there. Top ten values. Okay. Put down your pencil. All right. So now I'm going to give you less time, and I want you to look at those top ten and pick the top five. Go. You have 10 seconds left. So just the top five. This one's usually pretty easy. Okay, time is up again. Now, the top three. Don't think too hard, go. One, two, three. Okay, no surprise, right? You know what's coming next. So pick number one. Okay, so just mark that on your paper. Kind of put a circle around it, that's your first one. Feel free to keep track of that top three. But that is the values exercise. And I will talk to you later about what we're gonna do with all these or what you can do with these to get yourself going. So then we have one more exercise that we're going to do. This one is a little bit more complicated. It's called the feelings and needs exercise because you'll see. This one's very helpful to pull out some things about yourself that you didn't know. So you wanna get a piece of paper and put it sideways so it's wider than it is tall. And you're gonna put five lines vertically and make six different columns on your paper. So in that first column at the top, you're just gonna write challenges slash experiences. Okay, at the top of the next column, write effects. The next one, feelings. Never gets what's next, right? Needs, of course. It's feelings and needs exercise. Then what I did. And lastly, other values I gained. So here's what to write in each column. In the first column, I'd like you to list two or three, and leave some space between these, two or three challenges or significant experiences that you've had in your life.
These don't have to be earth shattering. Sometimes they are, um, but they're significant to you. Could have been a move, somebody significant died, you changed schools, you joined a group, you left a group, you broke a bone, somebody was born, best friend moved away. There's all sorts of different challenges and experiences that we face. Um, you know, maybe overcame some kind of obstacle you had with being focused or learning how to read or ride a bike or speak in front of other people. Or could be a lot of different things. Okay. So hopefully you have two or three of those at this point. And then in the next column, and you'll probably want to just do one of these for now, and then you can finish with the other two later. Um, in the effects column, you're going to write some things that happen to you externally at the result of your challenge. So this is really worth spending five to 10 minutes per column. Obviously we're gonna compress that during this workshop, but these are the external effects. Like I moved, so I was disoriented because I didn't have any friends and I, I didn't know where things were at school and I didn't know where the store was and I was lonely. And so I was actually getting into feelings, but um, just those external things, you know, I broke my leg and I had to use crutches when for this event or that event or had to not participate in sports that week. So it's all the external stuff that happens, you know, somebody died and so we had to go out of town and do this thing or whatever. Um, you know, my parents were checked out for six months because, you know, their parents had died just some of the external effects of whatever that challenge or experience was. And these can be positive things too. It could be winning a race for the first time or something and, you know, the effects you got an award and you were recognized at school or here or there or whatever, okay? Um, and then the next column, the feelings column, and like I said, you know, five to 10 minutes per column is really a good idea. So we're going very, very quickly right now. But I want to walk you through the exercise so that you know what it is. And this one is so easily translatable into an essay or a portion of an essay that it, it just really is worth your time. The third column is feelings, and that's to make a list of emotions that you felt as a result of the effects you listed in column two. And sometimes it helps to see a list. So that's what the feelings and needs exercise sheet has. There's a whole bunch of feelings listed of, in different categories. And for every effect, there should be at least one feeling. And there might be multiples. You know, I moved and I didn't know anybody. So I felt, you know, maybe and get as specific as I can. I felt vulnerable and I felt apprehensive and resentful because I had to give up my friends and, you know, anxious and, there's just different ways. I also could be enthusiastic and giddy at the prospect of meeting new people and eager about that. And, you know, very appreciative that I have the opportunity. So there's lots of different things and they can conflict and it's okay. Um, but you want to list at least one feeling per effect that you listed in column two. I'm going to give you a few minutes on this one because it's really important that we not move ahead until you've really gotten some feelings written down. So take some time um, and use that list. It's it's helpful to really <clears throat> expand and not just say happy or sad, but get into it a little bit more specifically. There's power in these specific adjectives. There's a lot being revealed there. And nobody else has to ever read this. This is just for you. So don't feel like you need to worry about anybody else's opinion on it. Because maybe you, nobody ever knew that you felt that way about that thing when it happened. That's okay. I'll give you another minute or so to really take a little time with this one.
Okay, so the next column is needs. So let me kind of summarize. At this point, maybe your brainstorm has moved around a lot for a challenge, and then you had no security or home. They made you feel anxious, lonely, stressed. Or maybe you were stuck in between cultures and the effects were you had family shame or ridicule. And that made you feel isolated or disconnected. So we've got a few things going on here. Okay. So this comes, this whole exercise comes from a nonviolent communication kind of seminar way of doing things. And and it posits or it, it asserts that when we feel negative emotions, it's due to an unmet need. So for each feeling you've listed, ask yourself, what need wasn't being met? And again, on the feelings of need sheet, there's a lot of examples of different needs that were, were not getting met. You know, and it can be pretty simple. Like I moved to a new school. I didn't know anybody. That made me feel isolated. What needs not getting met? Obviously my need for friendship. Right, my need, need for community isn't getting met. And it's okay if you have multiple needs for a given feeling. So take a few minutes to brainstorm the unmet needs that may have been motivating each of the emotions listed in column three. I'd like you to, before we go on, identify any emotions or needs that surprised you. Like sometimes we think we understand our past, but it's not until someone questions us that we realize there are multiple ways of making sense of our past. Some of these are unexpected. When one of my colleagues went through this, he shared about his parents' divorce that had been 10 years previous to our meeting. And he said, when he did this exercise, one of the times he realized that he'd felt disconnected and detached because he needed intimacy, community, and connection. And he was like, whoa. I had never thought of that. He just kind of had done the whatever thing, kind of brushed it off. So sometimes our feelings and our needs that show up in this surprise us. So just note those. So take another minute. And are there any emotions or needs that might actually surprise you in this? Okay. Remember when you do this for your other challenges and experiences later, give yourself five to 10 minutes per column to really take time to think things through, to let it just sit in you. Okay. Cause things will bubble to the surface and that's okay. Part of the richness of our person comes from these deep places. And so an exercise like this helps us to surface them in a way that's safe in a way that we go, oh, wow, wow, that's a thing. That's that's pretty strong. And that may end up being a key to your essay. So the more deeply you dig and let yourself think and percolate on these things and be in touch with those things, the more rich material you're going to have for your essay. And guess what they're going to remember? The 85,000, my parents got divorced and life is terrible and feel sorry for me essays. Nope. Our team lost or somebody got injured or I got injured. Nope. You know, they, they hear a lot of those over and over and over and over and over. And maybe your challenge is the same as one of those or is another common challenge. But when you are touching base with these deep feelings and deep needs that you weren't met and you're unearthing this, there's a rawness. There's a difference in how you're articulating what's going on in a theme you maybe are going to pull for your essay to bring things together that resonates 
because we've all been hurt. We've all been through different things and, and it resonates and it echoes and they're like, wow, this kid's profound. There's, there's depth here. Do you remember the kid with the blue shovel or whatever? And those things are what echo in their heads. And guess what? Now you're standing out from the crowd. This is what you want to do. Okay. Moving on to the next column. What I did, you're probably wondering what in the world is this about, right? So we do things to meet our unmet needs. For example, for myself, when I was in high school, now I was born on Thanksgiving and our cutoff date in Illinois was December 1st. So I was one of the youngest kids in my class. I was also really, really smart. So I was really immature and really smart. So guess what I didn't have very many of? Friends. <laughs> so one of the things that I did in high school to cope with that was I got involved with every in every club under the sun, pretty much. And I was at school from six in the morning till 10 o'clock at night because I wanted to be. And I was running the newspaper and I was doing the literary magazine and the French club and I was in the band and I did theater and I did this and I did that. Part of it too was I didn't really feel loved and appreciated at home and connected with. So I met all of those unmet needs by being super involved at school. For me, and that gave me a place to be connected with my peers and with teachers because I didn't have the natural friendships because I was smart and immature. And so I just wasn't there on the social scene. And, and it took a long time for the mature to catch up with the smart. And that's okay, but it just makes high school really painful. For, so that's how I met my unmet needs for community and friendship and things like that. So what did you do to meet your unmet needs? You just lived your life, but think about it in a broader sense. What did you do? You know, like on the surface as a teenager, I would have said, oh, I'm interested in all these things because I was. But when I get to a deeper level later on, I realized, yeah, and I was really lonely and I wanted to connect. There was another motivation underneath there. It doesn't make, mean I wasn't interested because I, I was. I didn't get involved in things I wasn't interested in, but I was so over-involved because of this other unmet need. I went down a layer. So the same thing for you. What did you do? So if you know what you did to meet your needs, write those things. Or if you're not sure, you could list some of your favorite activities around the time of the incident that you're writing about and ask yourself later, could it be that this activity was helping me meet my deep, deeper needs? If so, which one? Or ones. So that's something to note and take a little time with later on. Okay. I'll give you a minute or so to work on that. Okay, that last column, other values I gained. There were things that happened in our lives because of what we did in addition to meeting those needs. So like my friend got involved in theater and found new ways to express his creativity, gained confidence, traveled. So there were other things that happened. For me, yes, I built confidence. I got to go to Northwestern. I'm sure my being in charge of this, that, and the other thing by senior year was a significant part of their acceptance in addition to my grades and test scores. Um, so I had that opportunity. I got to explore a lot of different things that I never got a chance to do again in, in life. Um, I did some traveling. I did some performing on my oboe. I did some different things like that. So there's other values I got, I gained because of that. And there's a what did I learn think. No, it's not here. You can use the values. I thought there was a, a what did I learn list, but I'm not really seeing it. So a lot of them are very, very similar to the values on the values exercise. So you can go ahead and use that list. And go ahead and add other things, you know, self-reliance and trust and, and social justice and autonomy and patience. 
there's different things that we've learned. Um, our spirituality may have had a, a deeper conversion. Now, a lot of these are on the value sheet. So you can pull from there for this values I gained column. Okay. So to meet the needs just mentioned, I learned time management. I did whatever. I'm maybe you're still in the process. What could you do to meet those needs? You know, as a result of that, I developed what values? Tenacity, perseverance, humility, the ability to have fun, quality relationships, ecological awareness, etc. Okay, so in addition to the unmet needs, I also gained some other values. So you're going to see some connections, obviously, the challenges to the effects, to the feelings, to the needs, to what I did, to other values I gained. And feel free, if you know what you want to do, to connect the other values I gained to your career. So you could even add another column if you wanted or write in another color ink or something. What career? And this um, could easily be a type A essay. We're going to get it into four different types of essays in a few minutes. But that gives you a thread or two to connect your story elements, which we're going to talk about some different kinds of essays. Okay, so you no longer are staring at a blank piece of paper. You have some homework, doing that objects, as, essence objects exercise, looking at the values again if you feel like you need to, and certainly taking five to 10 minutes per column on the other two or three challenges that you listed or that you would like to list and go through this feeling of the needs exercise. And feel free to use multiple pieces of paper, colors, arrows, whatever works for you. There's this feelings and needs exercise is really powerful for pulling out different parts of yourself and just being aware of so many different aspects of yourself, all of which can end up in an essay or just end up in better self knowledge. Um, and the values I gained, sometimes those fly into the, our values that we, and then we're going, <laughs> there's a connection going, oh, the top three values I listed are all things that are in this sixth column here in the feelings and needs exercise. Those all arose from experiences I've had, experiences I have had when I was young. Okay, let me give your fingers and emotions a little bit of a break. So there are two main essay styles, the patchwork quilt or montage or medley, and then the narrative style, which is a story or a timeline. So for the montage or the, the Patrick quilt, there's a theme and then there's vignettes. There's little stories and snippets. You could think of it like a thread pulling some of those essence objects into it or pulling values. A lot of times the value is the thread, but there's a theme and you've got these little, little stories that you're telling along the way, little snippets of this and that. A narrative, we all know what a narrative is, right? It's a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. There's a series of causes and effects. We just outlined one in the feelings and needs exercise. You're going to outline a couple more. So for the narrative, that feelings and needs exercise could be a very useful tool. Of course, we don't want to focus on the negative, but we do need to describe some experiences we've been through so they understand where we're coming from and how we got to where we are. Okay, so that prompt that you will see of, you know, tell us about your family and background, suddenly you have a lot more to say than, well, I have a mom, a dad, a dog, and a sister, right? There's just a whole bunch more that you could possibly say. And you may or may not want to say that. It depends on what your goals are for your essay that we talked about in the beginning. Okay, so now what? <laughs> We've got three different starting points or three different bits of data once you finish the exercises. And here are some places you can take those. So use the essence objects, values, and the last column of the other values from the feelings and needs exercise to call possible goals for your essay. 
you want to evaluate your academics and extracurriculars, because remember, they're going to have those bits of data. What else do they need to know? And those goals may be part of it. What's those, those values, those things that have come out? They need to really know that I'm trustworthy. They need to really know that I value the environment and the wildfire that we lived through in Southern California was why, or whatever it is that makes you, you. Okay. So now you've got, if you, if you didn't know what, when I was uh, asking at the very beginning, a lot of times people are like, I don't know what I want to say. You have some starting points for figuring that out now. And you have some starting points to take some of those things off. If one of the things you learned was to be excellent at your time management and you are showing lots and lots of activities on top of rigorous courses, they already know that one. So you can take that one off your list. You don't need to tell them that in the essay. What do you need to tell them that they don't know? Okay. So determine your essay goals from these things. Okay. And up to three, you don't want to try to say more than three things. Okay. And as was asked earlier, you know, about the standard five paragraph essay for English class, this is not, I am patient because here's an example, here's an example, here's an example, ta-da. That's not at all what you're going to do. That is telling somebody something and proving a point. Here we are showing ourselves. It's demonstration, illustration, story, snippets. It's a whole different way of writing, okay? But you are going to have some messages you want to convey. And if you've noticed, we are 45 minutes into this and I haven't said a single word about the prompts because I don't care about the prompts. I do, but not yet. I care about you helping helping you figure out your message and what you need to convey because then you can adjust those essays to meet the prompts. That's actually not that hard. But if you don't know what you want to say and you're starting with the prompts, you're going to say something has to do with that prompt, but may not really be revealing who you are and standing out the way you need to stand out to admissions because they need to see your blue stripe in their rainbow collection of students or your orange stripe or whatever, who you are so that you can bring that facet of awesomeness to that class in that college or university. So in general, more next steps, because there's lots of them. You need to get a little organized. Look at your overall writing and application requirements. The prompts are all out. So you can look at the University of California prompts, the Apply Texas prompts, the Common App prompts. The prompts are out, okay? What prompts do you have? Make a list. You're going to find some overlaps. Sometimes you can reuse essays. Sometimes you can't. What are your deadlines? Make a map. Make a calendar. Make a list. Whatever works for you. So I've got these due on November 1st. These due November 15th, December 1st, January, March, whatever. Okay. And then how many essays for each application? Because this one requires four and two short answers. This one doesn't require any. This one requires two. This one, you know, these four are going to use that personal statement, etc. And then you may have slightly different goals depending on different colleges and universities, depending on how well your list is. Because sometimes we're applying to a big university in a small liberal arts school because we're not sure. And we have slightly different things we need to say that to because those are very different environments. And so showing that I can fit in is going to require me to say slightly different things about myself. So that you can do versions of your personal statement on the Common App. So that may be something you need to do, but maybe not. And then your essay style. Are we writing a narrative? Are we writing a montage? What are your goals? Okay. So what type of essay are we writing? What are we trying to say? And then start drafting. So you have some places to start and you have some structures. So start drafting and editing, drafting and editing. And get your message pretty well honed before you go back to selecting the prompt. Because you will find your, your essay morphing and your message morphing as you go. And then you go back to the prompts and go, okay, I could, it could have been this one or that one, or well, let me just tweak it here and it'll fit this one really well. Um, because you've got to convey your message and then you need to tie it into the prompts. And then refine until done. <laughs> That's right, the easy part, right? Ha ha. So where do we go from here? I would like to invite you to join my summer intensive online essay class. That's going to be next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 11 to noon central time. 
So there's more information on that at tinyurl.com slash mentor. And I will write that into the chat box so you guys have that. And then I also do one-on-one -on -one essay creation mentoring. Um, so I have a couple packages for that. Expect it to take 15 to 20 hours for you to write a good personal statement. That doesn't mean 15 to 20 hours of my time. It means 15 to 20 hours of your time. And then that is really hard to do very well by yourself. So we've got to get things done by a deadline. We've got to keep it moving forward and we need to know how to refine it and what to keep and what not to keep and all of that. So working with somebody who's worked with submissions before is very valuable. Um, then I also do complete application management. So from soup to nuts, all the parts of it, keeping track of it, keeping everybody in the loop, keeping the parents, the financial aid, the recommenders, all of it. So that I have information at College Prep Mentor, which you can actually get from one or the other, but that is the URL I set up directly so that you could find that information if you are interested in more thorough uh, help. And I do have a few slots open still. And then sometimes people just want to meet with me to look over the final essay or just to have a general conversation about the whole college list or application process or early action versus early decision versus rolling versus single choice versus this, that, the other. So um, that's available on either essay mentor or college prep, me college prep mentor. Sorry, I'm talking too fast. Um, and that we will meet for an hour. I have a typical first um, meeting agenda, which I will share with you, or we can go off your questions. So that is up to you. Um, and then I want to share with you about a young man I worked with last year. I mentioned him at the very beginning. So he submitted everything on August 1st, which was the day things were open. He's a homeschooler from Texas, and he spent they spent $1,200 in essay coaching. It was very intense just because of his schedule, but he really worked hard. And um, we, wow, we made a huge amount of progress in a short amount of calendar time. Um, he got accepted at all seven of his schools, including his REACH school, which is a tough school to get into. And he was offered almost $400,000 in scholarships. So by the time his peers were starting to apply, he had acceptances in hand. And beginning of October, he had acceptances in hand, scholarship offers in hand. He had plenty of time to make his decision and figure out what he wanted to do weigh the whole money issue with his parents and sort all of that out and, and made a great, great selection. Had a great first year so far. So taking time and investing in this piece of it is huge because yes, he had grades and scores, but even at his reach school, you're very iffy. That essay makes a huge difference. And it makes a difference in scholarships. A lot of times they'll flag different themes and different things. So, or you'll need to write essays for it and essays start to get based on other essays that you've written. And if they're all kind of eh, then they're all kind of eh. And if they start out with great things, then you can build on that with other great things, you know, and the students are learning techniques for me and strategies as they're going along as well. So if you have me do the whole thing soup to nuts or just a piece of it, um, whatever suits your family. I want to thank you for coming and sticking with the entire workshop. And do schedule in time, either tonight or tomorrow, to finish those exercises. And then time after that to sort out, what am I going to do with these? What are the values that I want to take forth? What are the goals of my essays going to be? To organize your prompts and your deadlines to sort out what are the next steps and to get it on the calendar. And if you're not good at that, please, please, please have somebody like me helping you march you through it. Um, you'll make your parents crazy. <laughs> and, it, and it is what it is. There's enough things to be reminded of in this world, enough things that we've got to struggle with and and wrap our heads around and having some space to work on these take the time to work on them take the time to think about them set deadlines for yourself i'm going to get the next thing done by this the next step done by that the next step done by that etc the one thing i would discourage you from is showing them to your english teacher because they have a different agenda that's an academic paper that they're writing academic essays of various types poetry etc 
This is a personal statement. This is admissions essays. It's a whole different thing. And if they haven't worked with admissions offices, then they're still thinking like an English teacher and that's the wrong set of goals. Sometimes you can use slang in these. It just depends on who you are and what you're trying to say. It's a very different thing you're trying to say. So I really encourage you to get a mentor. I would love to have the opportunity to work with you further on that, but to get somebody to help you walk through. It. So um, I will look forward to hearing from you. And I will send a follow up tomorrow with a link to the recording so that if you want to go through any of these again, hear those instructions again as you're walking through it, you'll have that opportunity. Thank you very much and have a great night.